I posted recently that I wasn't going to release a weekend playlist this Wednesday. There's my cat butt down there. Um, because I was in some pain this past weekend and ended up not doing anything except laying on the couch with my heating pad. But I'm still in a little bit of pain, but I'm able to function a little bit better than I was this weekend. And I wanted to do a little book haul of recent purchases. So I checked the mail today and I got Year of the Tiger by Alice Wong. So this was recently released and I mentioned in a previous video that this was one of my anticipated reads and I am really pumped to get into this, especially given the context of my weekend as I just described. Um, I have some kind of mystery illness, but likely having to do with my thyroid just because my family has thyroid problems and that usually results in a lot of joint pain and fatigue and I think reading this will give me some information, learning more about Alice and her life, but also I think it will give me some kind of comfort and advice maybe even, or just some guidance on how to handle coping with chronic illness, chronic pain. So can't wait for that. The second newest book that I recently purchased is Grown Ups by Marie Albert. And this one is translated from the Norwegian by Rosie Hedger. So I was definitely drawn to this because of the colors of the cover, very high contrast, gotta love that. And this is described as a smart, witty, and quietly devastating novel, which sounds right up my alley. Ida is a 40-year-old architect, single and starting to panic. She's navigating tender and contemplating freezing her eggs terrified that time has passed her by. Stuck in the idyllic Norwegian countryside for a family gathering, Ada is rapidly regressing. She's picking fights with the younger sister, Marth, and flirting with her sister's husband. But when some supposedly wonderful news from Marth sends tensions rocketing, Ida is forced to recognize that there's more than one way to finally grow up. And as a struggling mid-20-something kind of person, this hit home. So, the next read that I picked up, my cat is really making the rounds behind me. The next read I picked up was during a trip to the lake when I went to Winnipesaukee with friends. And this is right after I read Patti Smith's Year of the Monkey. I picked up Wool Gathering by Patti Smith. And I mentioned this in a past video as well, but this will be incredibly enjoyable as a little tiny with, as usual, her photographs. So I can't wait to get that. The next one that I picked up recently from my local bookstore is Eat Up by Ruby Tando. And Ruby Tando was one of the early contestants on British Baking Show. And I fell in love with her when watching it for the first time. I mean, look, gorgeous, gorgeous person. So besides the fact that this cover is brilliant, absolutely love the illustrations. Cover illustrations by Sine Park. Sine Park? I'm not sure, but they're talented. And this is a culinary manifesto um, where Ruby implores us to enjoy and appreciate food in all its many forms. Food is after all what nourishes our bodies, helps us commemorate important milestones, cheers us up when we're down, expands our minds and connects us with the people we love but too often it's a source of anxiety and unhappiness. So I think in this, this is a memoir type book where she examines her relationship with food and I am always a fan of some good food writing. And the next purchase that I made was an apprenticeship or the book of pleasures by Clarice Lyspector. And again, this is another one where I was definitely drawn in by the cover because I absolutely love this. It's very, um, New York Times, kind of simplistic, elegant. And this is translated by Stefan Tobler from the Portuguese. And I think the first two reviews that I saw on the back were from Sheila Hetty, who actually also provides an afterword and lit hub. So I thought this would just align with my tastes very well. In this romantic novel by the great Brazilian writer Lori, a primary school teacher is isolated and nervous, comfortable with children, but unable to connect with adults. 
When she meets Ulysses, a professor of philosophy, an opportunity opens, a chance to escape the shipwreck of introspection, and embrace the love, including the sexual love, of a man. So, this is another brief one. I find they're, I mean, obviously just easier to get through sometimes when I'm in a reading slump, and that may happen as it starts to get colder. And the last book that I picked up was actually have a date with a book. So my local bookstore has a table set up with books with short blurbs on the front. The book is wrapped like this. And basically you read the blurb, decide if it's something that you might like, go home and open it and be surprised. So the blurb that is on this mystery book is a cult classic LBGTQ novel trans woman goes on a road trip with two little illustrated cacti. So I felt like this was very promising and I wanted to open it with you guys. So here we go. All right, I see Tori Peters reviewing. They have a blurb there. Ah! And I'm, in I'm incredibly happy about this. So it's Nevada by Imogen Benny, and this cover is gorgeous. Love this orange. And I have actually heard of this one. I think I heard it talked of by CJ Reads, maybe? But Maria Griffiths is almost 30 and works at a used bookstore in New York City. She drinks and takes random pills, but doesn't inject anything except when she remembers estrogen because she's trans. In a moment of crisis, Maria buys some drugs, steals her ex-girlfriend's car, and embarks on a cross-country trek to Star City, Nevada, where she meets James, who, pro who is probably trans. What happens next is either Maria and James's salvation or their downfall. I'm so happy that this is my book surprise. I can't wait to read this. Oh my gosh. Yay, that's exciting. So that's my mini book haul, and I hope to get back to you guys with a full-length talky video soon. I have a vlog coming out this Saturday, and I hope you guys enjoy it, or watch it, or just like it. Okay, bye.